Hey everyone, back again for another Supra video. So in the last video, we went ahead and built the radiator sitting on the ground behind me. And it is a dual pass radiator, I believe 15 by 16 or 16 by 15, whichever way the dimensions go, by three and a quarter inches thick that fits in between the two intercooler tubes there. So, obviously a radiator needs a fan or some method of pushing or pulling air through it. In this instance, we are going to be pulling air through via a small brushless radiator fan. Really nice fan. I had bought two of them for the initial rear mat radiator system, and since that idea got scrapped, luckily these fans can, or one fan at least, can still be used on this system. So, to make a fan work appropriately, you need a shroud, which will be the first part of this video. So, as I mentioned in the last video, I was waiting on a RivNet tool where I needed to order one. And I did go ahead and order it. This one is from Astro Tools. And I'm actually pretty impressed with this thing. And I do not have a sponsorship deal with them or anything like that. Just, uh, just impressed with the quality of the tool. And it really wasn't that expensive. I think it was around $70 on Amazon. So fairly affordable for a specialty tool like this. So I had gone ahead and taken the liberty to put three of the four riv nuts in to hold the fan in place. And what I'm doing, if you see this says top outside, outside meaning the side facing the engine, I ran the riv nuts backwards. And that is due to the fact that there is not a ton of clearance or a ton of offset for this fan shroud to fit on the radiator appropriately. And I can't build more offset into it because it will already be running close to the dry sump drive. So it's literally the proverbial 10 pounds in a five pound bucket, but I digress. So what we'll go ahead and do to start the video is to put the last riv nut in here. And we purposely left this one out so that way I can show you guys how this tool works and what I figured out, at least in my mind, is the appropriate way to put one of them in. So the first order of business with these is to figure out the size of the hole you need to drill to make the rivet fit into the piece of metal that you're working with. So I have my M8, you can see it on the packaging there, my M8 riv nuts. I'll go ahead and get one out of here. And the hole obviously needs to be large enough for the diameter of the riv nut to fit through. So you can guess and check, or what I prefer to do is to take a little drill gauge, which I believe I got this from Home Depot, so pretty easily attainable. And if we go and start trying to put it through the holes, 27 64ths does not fit, it's too small. If we go two up, which would be 29 64ths, it sits and drums around. So in the middle, 7 16ths, it fits perfectly. And these are very handy for, I mean, specking holes for through bolts or anything hole related or hole creation related. I highly recommend picking one of these drill gauges up. It'll make your life much easier. So we know that we need a 7 16 hole in our piece of sheet metal being used for the shroud. And I already have it center punched right here. So I can go ahead, I can go punch the hole in the drill press and then use my chamfer bit to clean up both sides of it. And at that point, we're ready to put the rib nut in. So I'll go do that and catch up with you guys in a minute. All right, now we have our fourth hole in our fan shroud. So we need to take this rib nut, put it reverse through our hole, like we said earlier, so that way we're not impeding into the uh, space allotted for the fins and end up destroying the radiator, kind of be counterproductive for a brand new radiator. So we need to make this rivet or wood nut be a part of this fan shroud. So we take our riv nut tool and we take our appropriate die set or mandrel set rather, which this is the one for M8. You can see that there. Make sure you throw it on the floor. And we'll go ahead and start assembling the tool. So 
it has a sleeve on the inside here and a hex that corresponds to the hex on this. So you simply thread this first part of the mandrel down into it and let that sleeve go up onto the hex portion of it and that's to keep it locked in so it's able to be spun out when the rivet is put in place. There is a threaded cap on the top which acts as a stop and it comes with a little wrench. Go ahead, hold these knurled pieces and just snug it up and you're good to go there. So we are set up now for the rivet to be put in place. So this is the compressed position or what will pull it and cause the rivet to do the rivet action. So we don't need to be in that position just yet. So we expand it out and we thread our rivet on and it's important to leave a bit of a gap here. So that way you can start applying force to it and not have it be super cumbersome to put it in place. So at this point, we can go ahead and put the rivet in. All right, have our rivet tool and we simply put it into the hole. And I've been sliding up against the side of the table here. So that way it has a nice stop. Apply a little bit of force downward and squeeze. Give her a little squeeze there. And then simply loosen the mandrel out of it. And voila, we now have our fourth rivet in place. Now, I have our fan out. And I've gone ahead and I drilled the holes on the fan at the 7 16 as well, so that way it will fit on these four rib nuts and it actually helps to center it and to keep it in place. So we take it and line the holes up. She slides right into place, like so, and holds on Ooh, almost nice and firm. Probably wouldn't shake it upside down without having bolts in it, but. It is in place now, and this shroud is ready to have its hole punched in it for it to actually be able to draw air through. So there isn't a great way to cut big holes like this that I've found. I mean, you don't have a 14 inch hole saw or whatever this hole ends up equating to, or I, they don't make them that I know of, nor would I want to attempt to use one in a drill press or with a hand drill. So I'm actually going to cut this circular hole with my angle grinder. And you guys have seen me do this, I believe in videos past, or no, the, the other shroud that we built was for the YXZ intercooler, which I used a jigsaw on, and that did not go well. It was a total pain. So I'll go back to what I know, which is caveman grinding with an angle grinder, and we'll make this circular hole with the angle grinder. So the way, that I like to do this is when you are using the angle grinder, typically you're sitting vertical, but if you tip the grinder one way or another, you can use the radius of the cutting disc to your advantage to make a rounded or radius cut. Now, as I said in the, in the video where we went over the tools that I use here, do as I say, not as I do. Do not run your angle grinder without a guard on it. If it pops, you're going to end up catching an abrasive wheel somewhere where you don't want to, and probably advise against that, as noted by the scar there on my hand. But I'll be the bad example. I'll go ahead and start cutting this hole in this, and then we can clean it up and get it ready to be welded onto the core. All right, we have our hole, and not the prettiest hole in the world, but it does not impede the fan, so that's what we were going for. And as you saw, I just went ahead and put a little bit of a brushed finish on it to get the raw aluminum look off of it. So all is well here, and we're about ready to start tacking. 
So, it fits on, oh, come on, sit on there. Something like this. There's a little bit of a hangover here, and a little bit of one up here when it's equalized. And obviously the shroud is a little bit bendy right now, but I'll go ahead and clamp it before I start tacking, and all will be well there. So, I need to swap my bottles around. That one has, I think, about 100 PSI left in it, and this one has much more. So, we don't need to purge aluminum. So I'll go ahead and swap the bottles around and we can get to tack welding. And with that, we have a shroud welded to a radiator and a fan fastened to that shroud. So I'm not quite sure what that little bit of interference is there, but it's plastic, it'll wear in, not a big deal. But I am quite happy with how that came out. You can see on the inside, it might be a little bit of overhang on some of the portions of the circle, but not a big deal. The little bit of surface area or cross-sectional area lost there. I don't think it's going to have, it's going to be the make it or break it deal with how this thing cools. So the next order of business will be to actually get the radiator mounted in the car. And I'm not going to do that today. It's getting later. I'm trying to get out of here early today and I still have a little bit of work to do, but we will catch back up in the next few days and get this thing mounted in there and start getting the uh, getting the position to get the cooling system wrapped up. So I'll see you guys then. <laughs> 